Hey guys, I know I just posted a video last night, but I'm pretty excited about this. So you guys remember the old Bobcat M610? Uh, I think we restored that about, I don't know, has it been 10 years, eight years, six years? I'm not sure, but when we got this thing, it looked pretty bad. We made it into what you see there. Uh, underneath that cover, that's the 1964 Farmall Cub Square Front. That's kind of a collectible item from what I've been hearing because that was the last year that they were Farmall. After that, they were the International Harvesters. Uh, and then in the video last night, I did show you guys the bull gears laying up here on the uh, workbench. They have since been stripped out. Uh, while we're on these bull gears, I, I want to throw something by you guys and see what you say. So I do want to sandblast this entire unit. I know that I'm getting all new seals for these, uh, but I'm not going to get all new bearings because the bearings seem pretty good. Uh, I am going to take it over to a friend and let him feel the bearings because the cages are a little loose, but they're not real bad. Um, but when I sandblast this, I'm going to have to either punch these races out. I think that's what you call that, a race. Um, or I came up with the idea, and this is what I want to ask you guys. Have you ever seen, heard, done anything like this? I want to protect them. Of course, I'm not going to be sandblasting directly on them, uh, but I do want to protect them. So I'm thinking about taking a hot glue gun and hot gluing over that entire surface and covering it with hot glue. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm not going to beat right down on it with the sandblaster, but I am going to be sandblasting around it. So I want to protect those from the sand. Uh, the bull gears, the dust covers, the nuts, the bolts, there's the, the axles, I guess that you call them. Um, yeah, so we got these bull gears tore apart. Now we'll come over here and I know I showed this to you last night. You know, we got all these parts here. They're starting to collect dust, which that doesn't bother me. Um, and then we have some parts here that are painted, some that need to be cleaned up. And then all of this stuff still needs to be tore down. We are going to take the bell housing and the uh, transmission tube off. Uh, we're going to sandblast all of that. Hopefully that will fit inside my uh, sandblast cabinet. Um, we're not going to get into the motor. The motor ran great. We're just going to maybe put some new plugs in, put new wires on. Oh, there's Mr. Spider-Man right there running across the floor. We'll to, let me take care of that off camera so nobody from PETA gets me. Uh, the transmission. We're going to tear all the gears out of there. We're going to put all new seals in there. We already have the seals on order, as I said in the, in the video last night. Uh, and then that's the hydraulic unit. The one thing you guys haven't seen yet is that uh, kind of unexpected. Looking through uh, our local internet for sale site, I seen this, uh, offered the gentleman a little less than what he wanted for it. He accepted that offer. And, uh, yeah, it's in the garage. Definitely going to need some front tires. Definitely going to need some uh, OCDism on this because, as you can see, it is not bad. Surface rust is all. The thing that impressed me was the badges are in good shape. All the badges are in good shape. The grill is is just as straight as an arrow. The tie rods are straight. You know, we've had to beat the old ones straight and everything else. The only thing that I found on this whole thing is this panel right here. Uh, you can kind of see, and I don't know if that'll show up on camera, that headlight is actually twisted forward a little bit and has just a little buckle right here. But guys, this is a 1955 Farmall Cub and she is as straight as I have ever seen one. The hydraulics work awesome. It does need a little bit of carburetor work. We'll probably end up rebuilding that. That's not a problem. Uh, both of my tractors are through the hood exhaust. This is under the hood exhaust. The fenders are straight. <laughs> I can't explain this tractor to you. Um, the gentleman that I bought it from, is, his nickname is Ike. 
Ike, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you'll watch this video. And uh, we're not gonna get started on this tractor until the 53 is totally redone. Uh, so this will probably sit for about a year. I'll probably get the carburetor fixed and we'll run this thing out in the yard, uh, hook some cultivators up to it. Mm, let me see what I would have to do. I don't know if, I, yeah, I think my cultivators will hang on that. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, they will. There's the back bracket. So yeah, uh, we'll probably fix the carburetor, run this throughout the summer, use it for the cultivators. Uh, but instead of the cultivators, I made up some uh, the thatchers that hang on to the cultivator brackets. Uh, man, I don't think this unit has a whole lot of hours on it. Uh, it's a 1955. Everything is just as tight, even the steering knuckle. You know, that 64 was a little loose. We didn't mess with it, but it was a little loose. The 53, my God, it was like a sloppy piece. Uh, this thing is dead ass tight. I don't know if the camera, I mean, everything about this tractor, when you throw the, uh, the hydraulics up and down, bang, bang, they are on point. So the only concern that I had when we initially looked at this thing was, and I'm hoping that this shows up on camera, this is pretty common. Around the valve stems, you get a little bit of rust. And there was another thing when I went to put air in the tires, I noticed that the tires are full of water. Uh, see if I can push this in. Yeah, see that? That thing just runs water out of it. And it's not just this tire, it's that tire as well as that tire as well as that tire. So somebody filled these things, I'm hoping, with an antifreeze. But as I smell it, it just smells like water. So I'm not sure how that happened, uh, but we need to take care of that because that water is, it's not full full. So there is some air on the top side, which will cause corrosion on that rim. And we don't want that. So somehow we got to get those tires off, get that water out of there so it doesn't continue to corrode the inside of them tires. Uh, hopefully we don't run into anything like we did with the 53. Uh, I'll try to find a small clip and throw in there with this. Uh, the 53 front tires, when we went to take them off, I thought maybe they were calcium filled or maybe even uh, you know liquid filled, foam filled, but indeed they were solid rubber. And I'll throw a little clip of that in right now. Oh man, this is worse than I thought. It actually looks like it's some kind of a rubber that they uh, pour in there. Oh yeah, this is safe. But yeah, going back to this, uh, <laughs> wow. I'm gonna call it a barn find. I, I don't even wanna tell you guys what I paid for it. Uh, my dad said on the way home that we stole it. Uh, you know, while I was at the gentleman's, we kind of grabbed the tires and rocked them back and forth and everything felt solid. There's no slop in the tie rods. There's no slop in the bearings. Um, the steering knuckle is tight. The transmission shifts good, brakes work. They don't lock up, they don't make noise. Um, yeah. So just wanted to show off the uh, 1955 Farmall Cub that uh, we got home. Oh, one more thing, check this out. Turn it once, boom. Looks like original lights. Turn it twice, boom. Uh, original lights, they work. <laughs> I'm tickled to death. Ike, thank you so much. Nice meeting you. I will send you some pictures of the items that we were talking about. Um, draw bar. That's a, you know, that's an added option there. Whew, excited. Here we go.